Now at 11, a major explosion, and it's caught on camera leveling a KFC. And don't touch that plant, the toxic weed spotted in Clark County that can leave you with severe burns. And Ford owners, listen up. The investigation that suggests the company knowingly put faulty cars on the road. And why a Portland swimmer had to throw in the towel. 20 hours into a remarkable feat. Your news starts now. We're going to start tonight with an update for you on breaking news. A man armed with an axe that was held up inside a Gresham Jack in the Box is now in custody. Police say no one was hurt, which is good. They were able to safely evacuate that restaurant there on Southeast Stark. A little over an hour went by. Officers got that man into custody peacefully. The roads in that area are back open as well. There's nothing that they wouldn't do for somebody in need, you know, and it don't it didn't matter who they were. If they were somebody hurting, they wanted to be there to help them. New tonight, remembering two sisters described as inseparable. They died following a hit and run crash in southeast Portland and a crowd of more than 100 people gathered at that scene to pay their respects tonight. KGW's Mike Benner was there. The place that brought so many so much pain. I've been through a lot of hard things in my life and this is definitely the hardest one. Is now a place for healing and remembrance. They were the glue that brought the family together in a lot of situations. But yeah, they were just very loving and kind people. A crowd of dozens gathered at Southeast 148th and Powell Thursday night. Well, she would not be able to fathom how many people are here. To honor Robin McCready and Charlene Hout. My mom and my aunt, they were, they were two of the good people. You know, the ones that you see helping people. Brian Hout says his mom had recently come to town to be with her sister Robin who was battling stage four cancer. Change her bedding and help her eat and when it got bad. But both died from injuries they sustained in a hit and run crash Monday afternoon. Authorities say Antonio Montgomery is to blame. They say the 20 year old got into a crash near Southeast 162nd and Powell, but instead of stopping, he sped away. During the getaway, we're told, Montgomery ran a red light and plowed into a Jeep the sisters were riding in. One minute I'm angry, one minute I'm sad. The next I I'm fine. Next minute, I, I'm in a dream. For family and friends, losing Charlene and Robin has been unbearable. They meant a lot to so many. Just look at the large gathering in their honor. They're very happy to know that they have been loved so much. Love you, Mom. The family has started a GoFundMe to help with funeral expenses. You can find a link to that GoFundMe on our website, KGW.com. In the meantime, the suspect in this hit and run case remains jailed tonight on a number of charges, including manslaughter and assault. Reporting in Southeast Portland, I'm Mike Benner for KGW News. We have an alert for you tonight. We want you to keep an eye out for this 16 year old you see in the, on your screen there. Tigard police are saying that Daniel Huang is uh, is missing right now and endangered. He's wearing clothes they think similar to the ones that you see in these photos and police say he's known to visit the Progress Ridge Center and Barrows Lake. So please call 911 if you see him. Caught on camera, an incredible rescue in Albany, Oregon. This happened this morning, and you can see here in the video, that's a woman dangling from a bridge. The only thing keeping her from falling from that bridge is a sign that's really only anchored by two cables. Fire crews say this woman was about 50 to 60 feet above Calipulia uh, River, and they say a fall from that distance would have likely killed her because the water levels were so low. A firefighter lowered himself down. He put her into a safety harness. She was hoisted up and taken to safety, thankfully. The whole rescue took a while. It was about an hour or so. Crews say the woman was evaluated at the scene, and as of right now, there's no word on how she fell off that bridge. Take a look at this man. Police say he is the suspect who ran from the scene of an officer-involved shooting in Beaverton this morning. He's 20-year-old Calvin, Calvin Davenport. He was wanted in connection to a sex trafficking case, and when undercover detectives tried to catch him, they say he drove his car directly at those officers, so they opened fire. Now, Davenport survived that. The car did, too, and he took off. They found that car a little distance away. It was abandoned. It was right next to West Sylvan Middle School. You can see some bullet holes in the windshield in the video. They sent canines after him at that point because he took off on foot, but they couldn't find him, so they had to call off the search after several hours. If you see Davenport, we showed you his picture. We have it online, too, if you want to take a second look. Please call 911. There is a warning out tonight about a toxic plant. You're going to want to listen to this because just touching this thing can cause severe burns, and this is what it looks like. It's called giant hogweed. 
Clark County Public Works officials are telling us right now that this plant has in fact been spotted in the Salmon Creek area, mostly along the watershed. Now they have a vegetation management team right now working to get it out of there to get rid of it uh, whenever they see it. But to show you just how dangerous this is. We're going to turn now to our sister station in Washington, D.C. Uh, we want to warn you some of the images of these burns. I mean, these are this is serious stuff. It's kind of hard to look at. Uh, this is what happened to a Virginia teenager when he came in contact with this giant hogweed. He was removing it from a yard, something that simple. He had no idea how dangerous it was. But when the sap of that plant is combined with sunlight, it can cause second, even third degree burns, even permanent blindness if it gets in your eyes. You can see Alex Childress had burns on his face and arm. I fell over, brushed my face, like briefly brushed my face, and then I picked it up and I was carrying a bunch of other stuff under my arm. Alex's burns healed, but it took a while. Clark County Public Works officials are asking anyone who sees this type of plant, this hogweed in their area, to note the location, take a photo, let them know exactly where it is. We've got their email address for you on KGW.com. That's gonna be hard to get on. I'll do too far go. This is uh, might be the craziest video I've ever seen. Uh, this is video in uh, the Eastern Pacific Ocean. Members of the Coast Guard, watch this moment right here. Uh, this is a high-speed chase on the water. You see him jump on the back of that? That's a semi-submersible, as they call it. Basically, kind of a submarine that skims the top of the water there. They were suspected of carrying illegal drugs. Now, this operation that you're watching, it happened on June 18th, and you can see the guardsmen jump onto that vessel while it's flying through the water. They pound on the hatch. It's like something out of a movie. Eventually, somebody opens it, and I guess they take him into custody. This operation is one of 14 that they carried out by three Coast Guardsmen ship, ships from May through July. Uh, together, they've confiscated more than half a billion dollars worth of drugs, so they are doing their job here. They came ashore in San Diego today with their haul, and they were greeted by Vice President Mike Pence. Wow. Now to the major storm that's brewing in the Gulf of Mexico. We have parts of Louisiana under a hurricane warning right now as Tropical Storm Barry gathers strength in the Gulf. This is why it's so concerning, not necessarily because of the winds and all the things that bring, come with a hurricane, but it's the rain, it's the flooding. Barry could push the Mississippi River to the highest levels in nearly 70 years, and that's because there's already major flooding in that area from prior rainstorms. Mandatory evacuations have been ordered in some areas, and those storms, uh, the people in the storm's path, they're doing this. They're buying what they can, they're stockpiling sandbags, and they are getting ready. Chief Meteorologist Matt Safino is in the Weather Center. He's tracking this storm for us. Hey, Matt. Hey, Dan. Yeah, uh, Barry looks very disorganized and very asymmetrical right now, but it is a gathering storm, getting stronger. And again, uh, the the question of whether or not it'll be a hurricane or not when it makes landfall doesn't really matter because either way, tropical storm or hurricane, it is going to produce copious amounts of rainfall as it moves inland and moves inland really slowly. I mean, look at this. Saturday evening, it's in southern Louisiana. By Saturday night and Sunday evening, it's still in southern Arkansas, so it's just not moving that fast, which allows more opportunity for it to produce rain. Now, this will not just be a coastal storm. The impacts inland, well inland, will be severe with the rain that's on the way and then the high water that's already on the Mississippi River because of flooding. I mean, the Mississippi River drains about two thirds of the U.S. It's a massive watershed and they've had incredibly wet spring and summer. So there's already high water on the Mississippi that has nothing to do with Barry. Now you throw the rainfall from Barry on top of that big, big problem. We've got hurricane warnings on the coast, but a bigger concern for southeast Louisiana is the storm surge, which will be three, maybe six feet down here. That with the rain is going to cause widespread and severe flooding. It is a very dangerous situation, along with all the other watches and warnings that they've got going on down there. Look at our rainfall forecast for New Orleans. It's over a foot of rain in a very short period of time. It's now up to about 14 inches. Some places may end up with 18 inches of rainfall and the yellow that's seven inches of rain extends well up through Mississippi, even up towards Memphis. So these amounts that you're seeing here, those are on the low end. It's going to be more like six, seven inches well inland. So two things, not just a coastal storm, inland areas will be affected and the flooding won't just be a few streets that are closed. It's going to be the kind of flooding that floods the lower floors of homes and businesses. It's going to be a big problem right through the weekend. Dan, back to you. Let's, let's hope people are watching the weather forecast. Listen to people like I'm you. I'm sure they Stay are. safe. Thank you, man. Appreciate it, Matt. So this downtown Portland lot was once filled with food carts. In fact, just two weeks ago, all those carts right there at 10th and Alder had to move. They had to get out of there and make way for Portland's first five-star hotel. KGW's Morgan Romero went there today to check in on some of them. 
some of the carts found new spots, like Grilled Cheese Grill, now in this pod on 3rd and Stark. Owner Matt Breslow feels lucky. He says the timing of all this, though, is especially tough. This is right, right when our busy season starts, so this is a, a major disruption to our business to have had to uproot and, and, and go elsewhere. About 30 of the carts are sitting in storage on a lot at the post office. Until they find a new home, dozens of small business owners aren't making any money, and many employees are out of work. Danny Chan owns Sumo Sushi, one of those carts in storage. He has another food cart on Portland State's campus. Still, like others, he's not making nearly as much money now. We've been doing okay here, but you know, with the loss, you know, I have bills to pay. It was just kind of emotional all around. Pulling that truck, seeing everybody leaving, one after another, it was crazy. Salmon, avocado. A silver lining, cart owners got word there will be an update next week on a future home. Commissioner Chloe Udaley's office is working with Keith Jones of nonprofit Friends of Green Loop on solidifying a new pod. Her office told me it would be very close to this original pod on Alder, which is good news for everyone. Talks over the last month have been over relocating to the North Park blocks temporarily but that's no longer on the table. Jones says a more long-term possibility rose to the surface and he's meeting with the business owners on Tuesday to go over it. Morgan Romero, KGW News. So there's this Beaverton couple in a really tough spot right now and they need your help. So please watch this story carefully. They've lost their dog and they think they know who has it. It's a really interesting kind of turn of events here. Take a look. This is Lady. She's a black pug. She's cute too. Uh, and she got out of her house in Bethany in the Bethany area on May 18th. Someone had accidentally apparently left the door open. Well, the next day, look at this video. A couple apparently found her, and they took her to the Oregon Humane Society. This is a surveillance video, and you can see the couple with Lady on the right. Here's the problem. Now, while Lady has a microchip, the info on that was outdated. And because Lady went missing in Washington County, only their animal services had a report of it. So the Humane Society told this couple here the dog was astray. And as far as anyone knows, the couple then left and took Lady home. Now, her owners hope that they are watching tonight and that they're saying, hey, that's us with the dog that we brought in there. And they hope that they'll turn around and give that dog back. They can't be too malicious if they've taken an animal and drove so far to try and locate the owners, but then they, didn't, they haven't taken any next steps. So that's kind of the, that's why we're here. So maybe they were watching, maybe somebody who knows them was watching and you could let them know for us. If you know where this dog is, if you know where Lady might be, call Washington County Animal Services. You can find a number on our website. Next, a wild moment at KFC, boom, explodes out of nowhere. Now, no one was hurt, but we're going to tell you about all of the damage. You wouldn't believe it. And thousands of Ford Focuses and Fiesta cars. Now, drivers have reported problems with their transmissions before, but there's an investigative report now that shows the company, Ford, may have actually known about the issues before these cars even hit the road. Plus, talk about a prickly situation. A driver finds themselves dodging a cactus. Yeah, we'll be right back. <laughs> 